Good day, everybody. This is going to be a review. The final exam, OEM 210, Section D01, Block Exam for EKG Interpretation. All right. So question one, finding a PDR interval. Finding a 0 0.18 seconds, that's in the normal range, so sinus rhythm would be the best answer there. Okay, question two, SA node failure, AV junction remains functional backup. Which would you most likely expect to find when assessing a patient's ECG? You'd expect it a junctional escape rhythm at a rate of uh, 40 to 60. 52 would be the best answer. Okay, what is the best interpretation of the following rhythm? It's a rapid, narrow, and regular SVT would be the best answer there. Okay, moving right along. Sign symptom Q coronary syndrome. What is your interpretation? So I've got... ST elevation in V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, 1, and AVL, reciprocal changes in the inferior leads. So the best answer here would be an antroseptal STEMI extending into the lateral wall. Okay, what does the y-axis represent? That's amplitude, x-axis represents time. Okay, V-fib arrest, you've defibrillated the patient, you've done CPR, you've given us epinephrine, perform pulse check, it's weak. So we've got a wide, organized, slow rhythm not associated with P waves, that would be an ideoventricular rhythm or a ventricular escape rhythm. Okay, patient's hypotensive, diaphoretic, with extreme chest pain, which of the following tests would be most important? You can select multiple answers. So we're having an inferior STEMI, with ST depression in V1 and V2, suggesting posterior STEMI. So V4R would be indicated to rule out RVI associated with the inferior STEMI, particularly in right dominant uh, patients where the PDA comes off of the RCA. Uh, you'd also want to do V7, V8, and V9 to uh, definitively uh, rule in or out the presence of a posterior wall STEMI as the depression in V1 uh, and 2 strongly suggest that. Uh, limb lead reversal does not appear to be present here. There is some axis deviation by uh, a downward deflection in lead 3. However, that is most likely due to the STEMI and not limb lead reversal. And there is no indication of 60 cycle interference. Okay, pulse present, chirp of the following rhythm. You've got a consistent P to R interval with dropped QRS complexes, i.e. P's without QRS's classic for uh, second degree AV block type two or MOBITS two. Okay, moving right along. You know, situs rhythm with widened QRS complexes. Patient reports he had a wide, he or she, he had a wide rhythm several years ago, no complaints of chest pain, weakness, shortness of breath. Perform a 12 lead. What's the best interpretation of what we see? So you've got wide QRS complexes here. Uh, otherwise, looks like a sinus rhythm. So let's turn signal that. We go to V1. We perform turn signal criteria, and we notice that it is uh, downward deflecting, and the QRS complex suggesting, strongly suggesting left bundle branch block. Dig effect. Um, you do have some scooping here and there, but that is in, in just one lead. In lead three, you have some scooping. Uh, however, you don't really see that uh, throughout. And we know that a left bundle branch block tends to cause lots of ST anomalies. Right bundle branch block is not present. Hyperkalemic changes. Uh, the T waves are not classically, uh, have not been classically changed or altered in the way we'd anticipate. Uh, this is not a STEMI at this point. There are no signs and symptoms of acute coronary syndromes. And uh, this is classic for left bundle branch block with, if you look in your V-leads particularly, you have an appropriate discordance, right? So you have ST elevation, which is caused by left bundle branch block. The elevation moves upward and the QRS complex moves downward. That is appropriate uh, discordance. And so that strongly suggests uh, bundle branch block over uh, legitimate ST elevation. Benign early repolarization is not present, and this is definitely not an in STEMI. Okay, assuming a pulse is present, how you interpret the following rhythm? So the underlying rhythm is a sinus with 
wide, large uh, complexes that are bizarre looking, not necessarily associated P waves. Those are premature ventricular complexes, PVCs. Okay, which of the following leads is considered bipolar? Remember, only the limb leads are bipolar, so that'd be lead two. All of the V leads are their precordial leads, V1 through V6, are unipolar. Okay, an increase of which of the following is uh, strongly associated with the rhythm below. So this is torsade de pointe. QT interval prolongation would be the best answer there. Okay, assuming no pulse is present, how would you interpret the rhythm below? No pulse is present. It's an organized rhythm that would make it pulseless electrical activity, not atrial flutter because there's no pulse, so we cannot call it atrial flutter. Okay, which of the following rhythms is not shockable, assuming no pulse? So rhythm A is ventricular fibrillation, that is shockable. Rhythm B is ventricular tachycardia. VTAC without a pulse is shockable. Rhythm C is asystole. Asystole is not shockable, so rhythm C would be the answer. Moving along, identify the major ion movements during the phases of the action potential. All right, so starting at phase zero, so we're looking at ventricular tissues here, so phase zero is going to be sodium ions moving into the cell. Phase one is where you get a dip. And what's happening there in phase one? Well, you have calcium, ion, or uh, rather you have um, potassium ions beginning to move out of the cell. And then in phase two, calcium ions begin moving in and the, the calcium flowing in offsets the potassium flowing out. So calcium move out of the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum to initiate contraction. Phase three, potassium continues to leave the cell in what is known as repolarization. And then phase four is the resting potential. Okay, on the ECG, what does a T wave represent? That represents ventricular repolarization. Remember, atrial repolarization occurs during the QRS complex, and so it is masked. We're not actually able to appreciate that electrocardiographically. Okay, interpret the following rhythm strip, assuming a pulse is present, just normal sinus rhythm. Rate of 80, P for every QRS, QRS for every P, PR interval is good, QRSs are narrow, and the rhythm is regular. Okay, moving right along. Assuming a pulse is present, identify the following rhythm. That is classic sinus arrhythmia, increase and decrease in rate. Okay, question 19. Assume a pulse is present. What's our interpretation? So you've got inverted P waves that are very close to the QRS complex and a slow rhythm. And these are classic findings associated with the junctional escape rhythm. Okay, question 20, rather. Uh, which medication could account for the following findings? So you see this nice, shallow ice cream scoop pattern. I have a, actually have it circled in the V leads here. That would be dig effect or digoxin. Okay, which of the following medication will have greater impact on nodal, nodal tissues? Uh, labetalol, right? So calcium channel blockers and beta blockers tend to affect nodal tissues, whereas... Um, your uh, sodium channel blockers, your class 1, and your potassium channel blockers, your class 3, like amiodarone, uh, tend to impact uh, ventricular tissues more heavily. Assuming a pulse is present, identify the following rhythm. So we have a progressively increasing P to R interval followed by a drop QRS complex. That's classic for a winky bach a.k.a. Mobitz 1, a.k.a. Uh, second degree AV block type 1. Okay, moving right along. CPR. Patient's been shot multiple times in the chest and abdomen. You notice a weak, irregular pulse followed uh, in the following on the monitor. Uh, what's our interpretation? So you've got a consistent PDR interval on normally conducted complexes. Drop QRS complexes that makes it a second degree AV block type 2, a.k.a. Mobitz 2. 24, which of the following is a special property of cardiac tissues? We can select multiple answers. So automaticity, yes. Contractility, yes. Excitability, yes. Ion channel activation and active transport um, are not specific to cardiac tissues. Many cells in many tissues, if not most, 
um, have ion channels and are capable of engaging in active transport. Assuming a pulse is present, identify the following rhythm. Uh, it's irregularly irregular. You've got a chaotic, wandering, irregular baseline. Here's a rhythm strip at the bottom. Atrial fibrillation is the best answer there. Okay, identify the following rhythm. Assuming a pulse is present, you've got pacer spikes. Uh, it looks like you've got both atrial and ventricular spikes, so that's a AV sequential pacing, so AV paced rhythm. Which of the following is most concerning here? Sinus rhythm, R on T, PVCs. Short runs of VTAC would be most concerning. Okay, uh, match the electrical therapy or advanced assessment with its indication. So pacing is going to be for symptomatic bradycardia and responsive atropine. Cardioversion, most unstable tachycardic rhythms, where the SA node's not in control. Defibrillation, uh, pulses VTAC and VFib. V4R, uh, ruling out do, do, do RVI in the setting of inferior wall STEMI. V7, V8, V9, ruling her out posterior wall STEMI. And that is the end of the final exam. Hopefully you enjoyed this review, and I will have this posted shortly. Take care, everybody.